Welcome back, challenges. My name is Zoo2014, and today I am not doing a train review or a train simulator video. Today I am doing a Lego review. And I, before I get started, I did re renovate my layout again for the third time, and then I did have a review for the Baldwin. I'm gonna have to re-renovate it again because it can't get around through this, even though its recommended curve is 22 inch and what it should I read an 18. Because in the catalog it's at 18 inch and somewhere else it's at 22. But yeah. But anyway, before I get started on the review, what we we're looking at is my steam engine right here. This is a steam engine from a train set I had a couple years ago. This was from Lugaret Cargo Train. And this thing, I got this I think 2012. And believe it or not, this thing still exists. The set was retired. The cargo it's from the Lego Red Cargo Train set, but it was retired. But I have it still. I have the instructions. But this train right here is six years old. Whoa, actually four. And then I have the Ryzen Express in the background right there. That I will do a review for it later on. But that's that. But anyway, I tried to make it into the daylight paint scheme. It looked alright. It does it does look a little bit like it but not the best paint scheme ever. But here's what the daylight paint scheme actually looks like. You can't really see it too well but that's what it looks should look like. Uh, but I did my best with it. But anyway, I have a my layout and you can see the daylight right there. I have a reversing loop on my layout but for some reason anytime I start my easy command up I haven't tried using analog, nothing moved. But when any time I start it up, a surge circuit occurs. I think because I need a new I think because I need so I need a new DCC system anyway, because Easy Command is good, but I need a different DCC system. Um I probably might get the D the Detract Zephyr or a different DCC system. Because they need to be able to program our locomotives instead of just 10, 11. Because even if I get a that cord, I can't control more DCC locomotives. But yeah, but anytime I start it up, a surge circuit occurs and nothing works, and I have all my locomotives on the track. But that's not even a problem because I can run all four at the same time. Analogs these three right here I can just double hit them but anyway that's that on with the review and let's get started so anyway this is my a steam engine mate and it's a bit uh, entirely out of Legos there is a little bit of metal inside of it this this thing is made out of Legos there is metal inside of it as well and I will show you where metal is located in this review but anyway this is supposed to be a, mo a Baldwin modern FRO. This is a good little steam engine. It's really husky, pretty small, good for its size. Now, believe it or not, this is stronger than my Horizon Express and bigger and faster than it. It can go faster than it, and it is bigger, big, and strong and powerful. Now, this thing went through many different changes. First, it was like a really long train. It was like this. It was like... It was like the Horizon Express size, and then plus the tender. So like, I can disattach the tender easily. It's not hard, but I am going to disattach these cars. Now the way I built the tender is that it has a ball joint connector. Ball joint. So like, at first, it was just like this tender, this new and this tender, plus the Horizon Express. So. Yeah, that's how long it used to look like. That's what it used to look like back then. But the tender had two wheels, two axle bearings, and four wheels. But yeah, I'm gonna do a separate video on the Horizon Express. And then what I may do is that I will do may do a tutorial of how to have two motors on one Horizon Express unit, so that way you can have two motors and you can have a dummy unit at the back. I don't have another Horizon Express, I just have one set, but it was pretty fun to make. 
But, of course, I did have to buy a power function separately, which I was pissed off at. Which was stupid, but I can see why Lego did that for money. But anyway, yeah. But that's how I made this. It's pretty nice and slick. Um, I did have a dummy one of these, so I could put this on there. But this I used to turn on the tender, the engine actually. But anyway, that's that. And I used to have my trains up here, my models up here, but I removed them and put them up here, and they, you, my Lego stuff used to be up there. But that's that. But anyway, let's get on to the review with this beast of an engine. Yes, this thing is a beast. It's strong for its size and it's nice. But anyway, this thing is a really strong husky locomotive. It's based off a modern 440 and built by Baldwin in the 1800s. And this is what it looks like. It's really nice. Now, it has a nice detail cow catcher, a nice detail handrail, some, and a nice, really nice detail pilot. Now, at one point in time, this thing did have actual working piston rods, but then it began having wheel slip problems, which you'll see on this video later. Now, when, before then, before I put the piston rods on there, it was really nice until I put the piston rods on, it began having wheel slippage, so that way it can put, could not pull the train or itself along, like it could pull itself along, but it could not pull a train, it could not even pull a single car, a steamer could not pull a single car, and this steamer is not capable of doing that with piston rods, so if you run a, um, gear this thing up, you can use a regular power functions motor like I have here, or if you have 9 volt, you can just put 9 volt instead of power functions, but Believe it or not, it was not easy getting the motor and the receiver in it at all. Because it, was it wasn't easy, I'll show you in a minute. But you get a nice detailed pilot, you get mar you get a headlight, a Mars light up top. I call it a Mars light because that's what I built it. Because that's I, I built a Mars light up there. You get a nice detailed headlight, you get marker lights on the side. You get some uh, classification lights up here on the top of near the mark. Mars light. You get a nice vent up here. You get a nice superheater vent right up here. You get a nice smokestack. You get a you get a sand dome. You get a steam dome right in the middle right here. That's the bell on top of it. And you get the whistle right here. Then you get the receiver which is another sand dome which is right there which represents the firebox behind this gray door. Now you'll see your orange light, that's my camera. So you won't be able to see it that well because it's dark in this room a bit. I don't have enough light. But yeah. And it's nice. And then you get the receipt, the motor, you get the cylinder. You, I built this gearing right here to make it look like linkage. And you get the nice cylinders right here. This is what I tried to make a cylinder. I tried to make a cylinder and these vents right here is supposed to represent the hole for cylinder cocks. Now this does not have steam. Of course you cannot build steam in Lego or sound I don't think. But that's what I did. This thing does not have a light but my Horizon Crest does and I nearly dropped my camera. But then you get a nice detailed interior. Steam handles don't really have like a control panel. They have like valves and gauges. I know it. A lot about trains, so I know what it's supposed to look like on the inside. But you got a little guy in there. You get some control panels. You get some bars right here. You and it's pretty nice. It was pretty easy building the bars. And then the roof can be removed as well if you want to. But that's how I did. Now you get the back here. You get the core, the the wire tether to connect to the battery box. And then here's that ball joint connector hole to so connect the tender. That's how I connected it. Then you get some green lights right there and a sign that says oil and I think that says I don't know what that says, but one side says oil. But then you get the Lego transit sign and then you get a little guy with the transit sign and the blue vest and blue and orange vest. And now here's now before I move on to showing you how I got the power functions in. 
I will have to dis. I will have to dis I will have to take the cab off, the entire cab assembly off to show you that. But uh, remember, at the beginning of the video, I said this thing has metal inside of it. So, to so show you what that means, on the front leading truck, that's where the metal is inside. So, I'm um, gonna show you the front and and I just took it off already. It's held on like this by that. So I'm gonna take that part off. Well, okay, if it will come off. And there it goes. Actually, I took the entirely swiveling part off, so I'm gonna try to take the gray part out. Getting a little hard too. It's like once you put it in, you can't take it out. So it's, you gotta make up your mind. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna forget about it. But anyway, that's that. So anyway, that's the engine right there. Now, when I said I had metal inside of it, I meant it. When I first built the steam engine and when I ordered the cow catcher, when I first built the steam engine, when I ordered the cow catcher, these are retired pieces now, but you can still get these from a site called Brick Owl. I'll put a link to that in the description. And that's where I ordered those piston rod wheels from. Those are retired too, but I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But anyway, there's metal inside of these. And and those little things right here, these gray cylinders right here, those are supposed to represent sand or brakes. I think they're supposed to represent sand things. But anyway, when I said that there's metal in here, I meant it. So I will show you how. And the metal on the steam engine is required to for it to work properly, or else you'll have a ton of derailments when going over switch or curves. There it is right here. This is the leading truck assembly, and right here, this is the metal disc that I had to put in. These are magnet metal discs that I had to put inside. That's the assembly, the shell assembly for it. This is the truck right here, and this is what I put on top of this red thing to keep it in place that's how I put it on and then I just simply slide it in now this metal is required so if you have some around your house or you could go buy some and it'll work for, for that so if you want to build the steam engine it's pretty easy it took me a while to make this thing will t the entire engine the engine and the tender will take you about an hour or two to make for me, when I build my steam engine, when I build this steam engine, it took me about two to three hours. It took me two and a half hours or three hours to make. It tell, and I'm gonna tell you this now: it was not easy. Now to get the power functions in, that's also another hard part. That's the hardest part about building this thing: getting the power functions in and building the wire. So to do this, I will have to, to show you. I will have to take the cab off the engines. So I will lift the roof up like that, and the roof is off. So now I'm going to take the sides of the cab off and take the, let this, the this off, the grab iron pieces. I have to take those off. And then the way I had this guy stand up is that I had two like red two bricks on here to help it stand up and I took that out so now you can't see it now because I had to pick it up so anyway that's it and I just dropped it okay enjoy looking at my reference first character while I pick it up alright got it that's the guy in the control panel assembly it was pretty easy to make you just have to do a little bit of stuff, and that's it. And this is the assembly right here. This is how I made the power function cables in. The cables are about are a little tucked are tucked down underneath it to allow the motor the receiver cord to get out. The motor cord is right there, plugged in. There's the window at the front, and yeah, that's how I made it. And then it just plugs into the battery box, and that's it. Now, it's also easy to put back together as well. It'll take about 30 seconds or a minute or so. 
It'll take about a minute to put it back, put all of it back together. But that's how I made it, and it really and it works as well. It's really useful to use as well on this type of model because this model is pretty slick to make. It's easier to make than than a gear steam engine because it's smaller and it doesn't take you a lot of parts and pieces and a long time to make. It really takes you about uh, two hours or three. Now if you're building something like April Knight, which is also retired, then that would take you a couple hours to gear to do because that has actual gears and then you can gear it up as well. But yeah. But anyway that's it for the engine. I'm gonna take a let's take a look at the tender. Slick looking ball joint to connect it platform right here coal pouring out of the tinder and the battery box there you got a nice detailed day, try, daylight paint scheme that I tried to make not the best paint scheme at, ever but that's what it did yeah. and up here you get a nice coal load now I put that on there it's, and that's how I turn the tinder on when the thing is connected then you get a water hatch right here and a tail light Another tail light down here and micro lights on the side. And magnetic couplers that like likes you put on their stuff to for easy connection to your trains. So yeah. Now let me couple it back together. Um I'm not gonna look at the rolling stock, but it's all regular rolling stock that you can make. It's not hard, it's just regular rolling stock. Now that crane back there, I will do a separate video on that as well. The crane back there, I'll do a separate video on that. But, yeah. But that's the steam engine, so. Let me just turn it on and get my controller. Like I said, it slips a lot because of the piston rods. And the guy fell out. Here. Okay, well. Alright, there, got him in. Alright. Alright, so we coupled up. Now I'm gonna do a couple of the circles around the layout. And then I'm gonna end this video, guys. So, anyway, challenges. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Even though it got a little long, I hope you enjoyed this video. So. Make sure to subscribe, drop a like if you enjoyed. So, anyway, I will put a link to Brick Island in the description so you can buy the parts if you need them. So, anyway, guys, I'm Luke 2014. Take care and enjoy this run by a steamer, this steam engine, for a couple minutes.